Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you might be. In this part 3 of Excel for Absolute Beginners, we're going to start to consider how we can unleash the power of Excel by using formulas. Later in the upload, you'll hear me talk about a function. A function, as we shall see, is purely a pre-written formula. Now here, in this worksheet, that I've called basic formula rules, we have three items of data, 10, 15 and 5 in cells B6, B7 and B8. The answers down the bottom here in these cells are all the same, but I've used three different methods to actually get to that answer. Let's look at the very basic way that I could have added the numbers in this cell. Now when I click on a cell, I see the contents of that cell, as you would recall from the previous uh, uploads, that the cell becomes selected. And here in the formula bar, I can see the contents of the cell. And I've typed a formula. The golden rule of creating a formula, incidentally, always start with an equal sign. The equal sign says to Excel, there is a formula following. And I've said, add for me the numbers 10, 15 and 5 and the answer of course is 30. I could use cell references. The reason we use cell references in a formula is that if the contents of the cells change then the answer will change. So here I've said that the formula is equal to F6 plus F7 plus F8. Now if I change the number in cell F8, we'll say to 20, watch what happens to the formula at the bottom. It changes the answer to 45. Whereas in this particular feature, if I uh, change that number to 20, the answer remains 30 because that cell said show me that addition. So we'll change that back to 5 just so things are nice and even. Now, what I can do is to use a function. This is the best way of all. And once you master the use of functions, believe me, uh, folks, you really do unleash the very powerful features of Microsoft Excel. So what have we got here in this cell? The answer is 30. No problem there. And when I look in the formula bar, I see that my formula starts with an equal sign again. Remember, formulas always start with an equal sign. And then the function sum, which simply means add the numbers. Which numbers? The numbers that are in B6 to B8. The colon means all the cells in between. So it's including B7 in that particular formula. You'll notice also that there are brackets. A function name, like sum, is always followed by a bracket. And there must be an equal number of closing brackets as there are opening brackets. So how did I create this formula here? I'm going to delete that particular cell. You'll notice now there is nothing in the formula bar. But what I'm going to do is to type an equal sign in the cell and here in the home tab in the editing group I'm going to click on the auto sum button looks like the Greek letter Sigma and Excel says where are the where are the um, numbers that you wish to add and it looks up the column and it says are there two or more numbers that I can add if there are it surrounds its guess with the cell references involved. In this case, H6 to H7 to H8, and it's included H9, although H9 is blank. To see the answer, all I need to do, I'll hold down the control key so I stay in the same cell when I press enter, and there is my answer, 30. Now if I change this number to 20, the answer changes to 45 because the cell reference being referred to here in the formula says look at whatever is in that group of cells. 
Now quite simply that is how Excel handles formulas. Now let's move on to the next worksheet where we'll look at a more meaningful set of data. Here we want to add up for the days of this particular week what are the total costs of our food and entertainment. Now as you saw if I click in a cell I can now choose the auto sum button and it looks up the column and it says are there two or more numbers I can add most certainly there are. So control enter says that the sum of my food and entertainment for that particular uh, day is 20. Now I'm going to undo that, um, that answer and this time I'm going to select the cells for each day of the week and this is a little bit of Excel magic as you may recall from part 2 should you have watched that because when I click the auto sum button it automatically looks up the column and adds all the numbers for me at the one time. Now what I want to do here in the average is to find the average for each of the days for the money that I spent for food and entertainment. So now what I'm going to do is to again drag across all the cells that I want the answer in and this time if I click the drop arrow next to the auto sum button I'll see that a statistical function called average is available. So what average does it looks up the columns but this time it is guessing correctly because it looked at these, these numbers here stopped when it came to a blank cell above a number and said oh there is the answer there. Well obviously that is not the answer. So what I have to do is to override its guess. So I'm going to, do, I'm going to delete that particular uh, group of answers. We'll click in this cell here and I'm going to say show me the average but this time show me the average of those two cells. So by selecting those two cells I override Excel's guess. Control enter I should see the number 10 which is correct. Now how do I copy that formula across all of these cells? Well it's fairly simple because Excel takes care of cell references for me. So if I right click on that cell and say copy and then drag through these cells and right click and say paste there are my answers. There are my answers. I still see I have the scrolling marquee around this initially selected cell. I'll press the escape key and that removes it. Now I want to count the number of cells in each of these and the count function count cells that have numbers in them. So what I'm going to do again is to click the drop arrow, count the numbers. It's guessed correctly in this case but I really want it to guess this number of uh, uh, numbers in those cells across there. So I will press control enter. It says there are two numbers and again I could right click and copy and paste but look closely at the bottom right hand corner of this cell and when I point at the little blob in the bottom right hand corner which is the when I see my mouse in the shape of a crosshair I can hold down my left mouse button drag it across and Excel fills them all for me. Now next I want to know what is the highest number in the food area. So the highest if I click the drop arrow again is max short for maximum. It's guessed incorrectly. I want it to guess in this group of cells. So what I'm going to do is to drag across that group of cells. Now it's saying oh, B3 to H3. Control enter. Good. 42 is the highest. Now I'm going to autofill across 
and it says yes 42 is still the highest good and finally what is the lowest number in that group of cells that is min short for minimum I want it to look at the lowest number we'll say in the entertainment group it should come up with a zero because that's the lowest number control enter good there's my answer drag across and there is the answer in all of the cells so remember that they all start with equal signs when I click here I see an equal sign when I click here I see an equal sign etc so wherever I click in a cell that has a formula in it and look up here I can see that they all start with an equal sign followed by the name of the function followed by an opening bracket with the cell references in between and the closing bracket there now one last demonstration of the power of Excel we know that the highest uh, food cost in each of those days was 42 right? highest cost across the week was 42 now if I change that number on the Saturday to 100 watch what happens when I press control enter it says ah the highest number is now 100 in all of those uh, cells but the um, uh, average here also increased in that particular group of cells if I click the undo button watch what happens here and here you see so they all go back in the cells that are affected by a formula thank you so much for watching remember that practice is the name of the game always remember the golden rule of all computing that is select then do remember also that Excel guesses when you use the statistical functions so you may have to look closely at its guess and perhaps override by dragging through cells thank you so much for watching see you next time bye for now